Hi, I'm Delina Stout with Brookside Barkery and Bath. In the first segment, we talked about how to make Urban Wolf with cooked prepared hamburger. Right now, I'm going to show you how to prepare Urban Wolf with raw meat. This is what I do myself personally. My dogs have been fed raw meat since they were young, and they really don't understand what cooked meat is or dry kibble. And I'm going to show you the benefits of this as well. One of the things about using a raw food diet, especially with this, I'm use, because it is um, in the summer months, I'm using some cool proteins like rabbit. Rabbit is a very cool protein, which means it doesn't have to heat the body up to um, break it down. It's a little cooler and it helps with the digestive tract. So uh, because we are going to be leaving out of town in the next few days, I'm going to be making a big batch of this so I can freeze it for my pet sitter to come in and use for later on. So right now I'm using rabbit and I've got, um, I'm going to use about six pounds of rabbit in there. I usually use about two pounds, but since I'm making it for um, future use, I'm making a big batch. So again, this is farm raised rabbit. One of the things about having farm-raised uh, meat is the energetics of meat. A lot of times people, when they don't understand the heating and cooling of different meats, um, it means that, for example, if you're using beef and you've been told that beef is a cooling food, if beef has been raised in a feedlot and where there's a lot of hot energy going on, that beef is now going to be hot. Uh, if you use a farm-raised beef, free-range beef, free-range chickens, the energetics of that meat are healthier. You get more benefits from those types of meat rather than uh, feedlot types of uh, poultry or beef. So when you're buying your meat, make sure it is free-range or grass-fed. So I've got some of my meat in here. And one of the things that I'm going to add to this that I did not add to my first segment is tripe. Um, tripe is the um, gullet of the stomach of the cow and this is it's kind of like all pre-digested so there's all kinds of good nutrients in here and one of the things that the dogs love is tripe as you can see it it's not a very appealing type of meat you will find everything in there that you don't want to see but the dogs absolutely love it Another thing about tripe is it is so uh, nutrient rich that if your dog is ailing for any reason and they have problems with digesting food, this is a great source of protein for them to use. One of the other things that I want to talk about when you prepare raw food, you have to wash everything. So that's why I have a specific spoon for my dog food and then um, after I feed them, their dish goes back in the dishwasher. So I'm going to wash my hands real quick. And honestly, you really don't want that tripe smell on your hand. It's not very appealing. But if you have a sensitive nose, I do have a solution for you. It does come frozen. So you can buy it frozen and it does not have the smell that the regular tripe does. So I'm going to just mix my tripe in with my rabbit. And then I'm going to start adding my Urban Wolf. One of the things that I did prior to, I'm letting my Urban Wolf soak in a little bit of water so that it's a little easier for me to mix in. So use a little bit of cold water, mix it with your Urban Wolf. And again, the reason why I like Urban Wolf is because of all the beneficial properties. So as you can see, again, it's a slurry. And then remember, if you're going to use existing vegetables, remember they do, dogs and cats, they do not digest fresh veggies. So they have to be in a rotten stage or in a slurry form because that way their stomachs can utilize the benefits of it. If it's fresh, guess what? It goes right out in the backyard and you're going to have some pretty poop. One of the other benefits of using raw food is that their stools will be extremely small. So I have a 120 pound St. Bernard and she has stools that look like little four walnuts when she uses the bathroom. So that, if you're the head pooper scooper like I am, that means a lot. So again, I'm going to stir it up and mix it well. And I'm not going to add any digestive uh, support like pumpkin or um, anything like that because I've added the tripe. 
and tripe is going to be the counterbalance to my pumpkin because it does aid in the, in the digestion part. I am going to, however, add oil. I used coconut oil in the last segment in the hamburger, and right now I'm going to use an oil called a Senta. Um, if your dog has any pancreatic issues or any kind of liver problems, using a high concentrated oil like a, a cod liver oil or an anch anchovy sam salmon sardine, your dog may not break that oil down well and it may exacerbate the problem. Ascenta is concentrated so it doesn't put the pressure on the liver and the pancreas to break down. So that's why I like using Ascenta. So I'm going to use about a tablespoon of that and sometimes I add a little bit more when I add, when I feed them. Because this is so concentrated you don't need a lot. And again, I'm going to mix that in. Some of people, if what they want to do is they, if their dog has some you know, allergies and skin issues, they may want something you know, to add in to boost up their, um, the ability to fight allergies and things like that. What I have found is I use a little bit of kelp. Every time, a lot of people think, you know, oh, I've got this itchy dog and they want to put a shampoo on them. Actually, we work from the inside out. Adding kelp is a high omega source. So I'm going to be adding, I would say, about a half a cup of kelp. I use my hand. And you, there, you, you can't OD on it. I mean, it's just kelp. So don't worry if you've got too much or too little. It's fine. So you mix it up. And I am going, this will be, uh, uh, I would say, about a whole week's worth of food for my pets. I'm going to break it down into two packages. So my pets that are Jason will be able to come in and take one bag out and have enough food to feed while we're gone. One of the things about raw food, um, you have to get someone who understands how to feed this if they don't. It's not the way that they should go. Also remember that dogs are not vegetarians. We have some vegetarians coming in and saying, I want to feed my dog a vegetarian type of food. And, I'm, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that they don't want to do it for themselves, but however, their dogs are carnivorous and they do need a little bit more meat than that. Soy protein is not going to cut it for an, a dog or a cat. And as you can see, just mix it up. And it looks like a meatloaf. And when I'm going to feed, um, I have a 22-pound dog. She will get about a fourth of a cup of this for each feeding. And our big dog will get maybe three cups at each feeding. As you can see, it's not that much, and it's a very easy way to do it. It's not any harder than making your own meatloaf. Thank you.